The next update for Elite Dangerous Odyssey, update 15, is just around the corner. And Frontier has shared some additional information about what we can expect from the update, including two new types of Thargoids for us to interact with, and a new module that we can use to finally pierce the Thargoid Maelstrom, and they have also revealed a tentative uh, launch date for when this patch is supposed to drop. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Elite Dangerous and to update 15. Now, there's a lot of new information, we're going to go through everything we know about this new update to the game. But first, currently Frontier, at least at the time of this recording, Frontier is aiming for a launch day of May 9th. That is Tuesday next week, where they are expecting to launch this update onto the live servers. So of course you can expect to see a live stream from me on the day where we're going to go in and play with all these new toys and with these two new versions of Thargoids that's going to be added to the game. The first new Thargoid that's going to be added, we kind of got a small teaser from a Frontier livestream a while back. And this is a complete new class of Thargoids. Previously, we've had the Interceptors, which is the, the big boys, and we have the smaller ones called Scouts. The new class is called the Hunter class, which is in between the two. So it's bigger than a Scout, but smaller than an Interceptor. There may be more Hunter classes later, but the one we're getting now is called the Glaive. The Glaive is a hyper-aggressive version of the Thargoids. It will attack on sight, and its purpose is to hunt down and trap commanders. So it seems that not only does it have access to some kind of shutdown technology, whether it's going to be a full shutdown pulse, as we've seen with interceptors, or whether it's just like force rebooting frame shift drives, um, it's not really sure right now. But at least it has something that's preventing people from just easily escaping as we can today. We also know that it does have access to the lightning attack. Again, whether this is going to be a less potent version than what we have on interceptors is a little uncertain at the moment. As we've been seeing, as you can see from the video clips here, it is small, it is very fast which makes it difficult to uh, to fight, as you're going to need a very nimble ship. We don't have any numbers on top speed or anything like that, because in the past it's just been the golden rule that if you can hit 500 meters a second, you can run away from everything. I don't know how fast the Hunter is going to be, or the Glaive is going to be, but it looks like it's going to be fast, so we might need even more speed if you want to be able to outrun uh, outrun the Hunter. But as I said, there is going to be a second type of new Thargoid that's going to be added into the game. And they're going to be added in with a new Thargoid mission type that's going to come along with it. So after update 15, we're going to be able to get these power on Thargoid-ish missions. So the idea with these missions is much like the power on missions we already have, where you are sent to a, a surface settlement that has been powered down with a power regulator. And your job is to power this the settlement up. Same deal here, but now the settlement is in Thargoid territory, and with that comes a load of additional threats. Not only, of course, will the Thargoids try to intercept you while you are in super cruise. If you linger around above the site for too long, Thargoid interceptors will also show up and attack your ship. But if you land and go out on foot, don't think you're safe then, because this is where this new Thargoid variant called the Thargoid Remnant is going to be added into the game. Like, they look a lot like the Thargoid skimmers, kind of like salvagers or scrap collectors that we've seen fly around at the um, at the Thargoid bases, the big Thargoid derelict ships that kind of salvage them and, and collect parts from them there. These are very different. These are not salvage vessels. These are search and attack skimmer Thargoid things, if you will. As you can see from the video, they will be searching around the site. They have these like light cones and they will be looking for players. 
and you can then either go the stealth approach, try to sneak your way in, get that power regulator installed in the power plant and then get out before they spot you, or you can go with a more aggressive approach and try to attack them. When talking to Frontier, they said the best approach to these might be stealth and sneakiness, but of course you are more than welcome to go and try to attack them. We also see some video of people trying to attack them in uh, in a Scorpion uh, SRV, which had, well, limited uh, success, I would say. So this definitely seems like to be um, a threat to be uh, to be reckoned with. And as I said, you're not just going to be able to hover above them and just blast them with missiles as you're flying in the ship, because if you stay in your ship for too long, interceptors are going to show up and you're going to have to deal with those, or they're going to deal with you real quick. Now, finally, we also get a new module added into the game. This is called the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer, which is different from the Thargoid Shutdown Pulse Neutralizer. And this seems to be a, a more potent version of the Shutdown Pulse Neutralizer we already have. Of course, we already know that the Shutdown Pulse Neutralizer is not strong enough to counteract the pulse that we get when we approach the Thargoid Maelstrom Heart. However, with this new module, it should be powerful enough to counteract this effect. Exact unlock requirements and power requirements, we don't have that yet. But what Frontier has told, because it's a more powerful version of the already existing one, it's also going to come with some other drawbacks in terms of its fitting requirements. So we can probably expect it to be either heavier or require more power. Secondly, in terms of the unlock, it is going to be, um, as with all the other modules we've seen lately, it's going to be something you unlock from the human tech broker at the rescue ships. The exact unlock requirements has not yet been disclosed completely, but what Frontier has told is that if you collect a lot of the materials that you can find inside the Maelstrom clouds, then you should probably be good to go. Of course, the big question that everybody's asking themselves right now is what is inside the Thargoid um, Maelstroms? And, well, at the time of this recording, Frontier has not been willing to disclose that. They're saying that is something that we're going to have to go and explore for ourselves when the update is released. So, if some of this tickles your interest, if some of this seems interesting to you, if you want to go with me and explore the Thargoids, um, the new Thargoids and the Thargoid Maelstroms when these things are introduced, then come by my live stream, which I will be live streaming on Tuesday, where of course we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at all this lovely stuff. So go subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that live stream and hope I'll see a lot of you guys there. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.